This morning I am in the town of Port McGee and I am walking over to the marina. I'm gonna get on a boat and go out to Skellig Michael. Well, the boat has been fired up. We're about to push off. We're making our way out to the ocean, going through these little tiny um, masses of land. We're, I think there's two Skelligs, and I think we have a glimpse of the first one up ahead. This boat ride for the first 15 minutes is, has, uh, has been worth it. It's just so beautiful here. It's such a beautiful day. So right now we're actually going to go with the boat through this, I'm calling it Seagull Rock. It's a small skellig. I believe it's actually called Lemon Island. And uh, we are just up close and personal. And you can hear these birds. There are many, many, many thousands of them. But I've never seen a scene quite like this in my life. Well, I love that rock, but now we're heading to the main event, Skellig Michael. And just what a gorgeous, gorgeous day we have to visit this rock or a monastery out here in the middle of the ocean off the coast of Ireland. Very, very lucky. The luck of the Irish is with us. Well, we are off on our walk. Yeah, you do. It's very handy. <laughs> Up to the top of the monastery. We're here. We're doing it. Well, we reached the stairs, and we're going to begin our ascent up to the monastery. Well, so far, 
Not too bad with the heights. A little bit exposed, but my, my height fear is like eight out of ten, and I'm I'm okay. The views, though, just look at this. Well, we're ascending up to the top, about halfway up. Whew. Well, hiking up about halfway up, and uh, it's been a pretty good hike so far. A couple steep spots, but just an incredible view, and an absolutely incredible day. And I'm looking forward to getting to the top. Well, behind me are the lower portion of the steps right before you get to the, what they kind of call the picnic area. It's kind of an open space, green area, quite beautiful. And it's just really incredible. Um, the feat of pulling off any sort of structure here on this island, because it is really quite steep when you're sitting here looking at it. I do miss not seeing the puffins, but uh, I guess I'd trade the puffins for a 70 degree, crystal clear, beautiful day in the middle of the ocean. Well, I'm up here on top of the monastery and there's four beehive monk huts where the monks lived and you have to be a special kind of uh, individual to want to build a dwelling out here. Now the view on a clear day is absolutely incredible. You feel like you're on top of the world, but the conditions aren't always this nice. Uh, I think they've only had 40 sailings this year where they get to come out here. Um, also. Uh, I believe the Irish Prime Minister is coming out here today, so I might see them. Um, really just an incredible place. And uh, I did struggle a bit with the, the height. Um, had to basically uh, scoot my way across because uh, of my extreme fear of open air heights. Um, so I'm hanging out here a bit longer because uh, I know the path back is going to be tough. But if you're seeing this video, it means I made it. This is what the inside of a beehive is like. It's where the monks live. This is the lower part of the, the monk fort and you go through that little hole and you get to the bigger part where the monks lived. This part right here. This is 100% a total guess, but I feel like they filmed one of the Star Wars scenes right up there. Which I think this might be the first time I've mentioned Star Wars. Um, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and of course a lot of history with the monks who uh, who use this island. And uh, the popularity of the movies really boomed tourism in this area. Our captain of our boat was talking about that, and he said the tourism um, was very, very good. Um, and then they've had a couple rough years after COVID, um, where they basically didn't sail at all in 2020. They only sailed for two months in 2021. And then this year, they've had uh, very bad weather. So there really hasn't been that many people on this island over the past uh, couple years. But uh, one thing we did miss while we were here were the puffins. They're puffins that make their nest on the island. They left about a week ago. They say they're out there in the water. I think they're just giving us hope. But uh, wow, what an amazing venue. Uh, you 
obviously have to watch your steps a little bit more because it is narrow, but it is steep. But I think it is easier. Now they did say on accidents happen more on days like this. And so um, taking extra precaution, um, just you know, remembering even at the end as I'm almost close, need to watch every step. Now we've heard a couple different stories about Star Wars. They had the helicopters bring the major stars, a bunch of boats come over. They had a Michelin star restaurant set up on the shore and five times a day they had the boats bringing uh, like high-end food like couscous and, and curries and vegetarian food over and uh, said so it was quite the production. They didn't say how long they were here though but then it was of course used for two different movies at the end of Force Awakens and during The Last Jedi. I don't remember if they used it for uh, The Rise of Skywalker. But you can see one look at the island and uh, one visit, you can see why somebody would want to use this for a filming location. Also, I believe J.J. Abrams' wife was is Irish, so that helps kind of tip them off to this location. That was actually the Irish Prime Minister. So um, we got to get a little meeting in with some government officials and uh, told them how much we're enjoying the country. That's the helicopter pad. There's also a lighthouse on the island and there's uh, three full-time employees now they rotate out and they go back to the mainland of Ireland um, but they are on the island one stays at the bottom one's up at the top and they actually live here so they spend the night here and I'm sure on nights like tonight it's absolutely beautiful but if it's 40 and rainy whew, the tough some tough conditions also incredibly there is 4g internet service on this island they have some sort of booster here for the people who live here. So, uh, of course I didn't waste my time looking at my phone, at the news, but if I needed to, out here in the middle, eight, eight kilometers off of Ireland, perfect cell phone coverage. You might notice I'm sans Madeline today. That's because Evelyn could not join us. So one of us had to, one of us had to come and uh, I was the winner. I feel bad that she didn't get to enjoy this. However, she doesn't like heights either, so it would have been uh, a harrowing experience, but she would have got it done. By the way, our boat's called Skellig Walker. It's gotta be not the Skywalker, right? Kinda looks like the dark side lives in there. Adam's back from his trip out to Skellig, and now we're going to go explore some sites along the Ring of Kerry. We've been staying in Waterville, and there's some cool spots around here that we wanna check out. Right now, we're heading over to some stone forts, and then there's a few other sites in the area that we wanna see before we head out to dinner. Right now, we're on the Ring of Kerry, and we're walking up. There are two stone forts here that we are making our way over to, and we're hiking through these fields here that are just full of sheep on either side. And they are just chilling, totally unfazed by our presence. 
but it is a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. And we are just happy to be out here exploring. This is pretty much exactly what we thought Ireland would look like. And it is delivering. Here's a castle over here. We are gonna go check that out next. Well, I'm here in the Licana Buell Stone Fort. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation, but I'm absolutely loving these stone, these stone forts. Apparently this was named uh, after the slope of Bully, which is a uh, summer cow pasture. And that makes a lot of sense because we actually are standing in pastures of uh, cattle and uh, lambs. From the sky, it kind of looks like it's almost like a human figure. Um, but obviously in here, you know, they had different um, uses for the different areas. And uh, the cool part is you can get up on the uh, ledge of these things and you can just look and see for miles and miles and miles. And uh, I sound like a weatherman, but the days, I mean, 70 degrees here in Ireland, the sun's out. It's just absolutely beautiful. There's a castle off in the district distance. I can't tell you how terrific it is being here. I don't think that the video is doing it justice, although the video is probably doing it quite a bit of justice. But this is peak Ireland for me right here castles, stone forts, sheep grazing, small country roads, cottages, see the, the ocean, you got mountains. What more do you want? All right, now we're going to head to that fort right, right there. This fort was built in either the 9th or 10th century, so this thing's over a thousand years old. Now we are walking over to the Caragall Stone Fort, which Evie is very excited about. But we could see it from the other fort, and seems silly to go all this way here. Not go look at it. I mean, the views were beautiful from one side. I imagine they'll be beautiful from the other. So let's go check it out. think bigger than the other stone fort we were just at. Certainly has higher walls. It definitely has higher walls. You can uh, climb up. There's some stairs and wow this is really cool. I can't even see over the walls. They actually don't know how old these stacked stone forts are and they just kind of assume important people lived in them. Um, they're very common on the west coast of Ireland. We've popped into a few older dwellings, but these have been the most oppressive ones we've seen. Um, but you know, we're not exploring the whole country. To come in here into this stone fort that's a thousand years old and to have it all to ourselves on this beautiful day, I mean, what an experience. And the view from the top of this thing, you can see a castle and <laughs> Ireland, bringing it, bringing it big time.
tremendous stop here at these stone forts. Um, if you're doing the rain carry, I think these need to be on your list because the view with the castle, and we're heading to that castle right now. Valley Carberry Castle, and we can't walk up close to it. This is about as close as we can get, but it's really, really cool. It's a cool castle. Um, there's like beautiful moss, or there's beautiful ivy growing up the side, and it's just like the perfect ruins of a castle. And I have to say, I love how like every cool, beautiful place we go to, right next door, there's always a bunch of animals. There's always a farm and you'd think I'd kind of get sick of seeing like cows and sheep, but I am not. We've been over here for, well, we've been in Ireland for about 10 days and I am not sick of seeing sheep and cows everywhere. But another amazing castle site here. Wish we could get a little bit closer, but we will abide by the signs and stay back. And just admire from afar. Man, that's cool. Right now we are heading up to the Cary Cliffs. The sign as we drove in said it is the most beautiful view in all of Cary. So naturally we had to check it out. Right now we're walking up. We've got some donkeys here to one side, some rolling hills to the other, and we're heading straight for the cliffs. Just some alpaca. Hanging out here near the cliffs. Well, beautiful view from over here of the Cary Cliffs. And off in the distance, you can see Skellig Michael. And it's just some really amazing views that we've gotten today. Absolutely gorgeous day. I know I heard Adam talking about that earlier. Feels like a weatherman telling everyone it's 70 and sunny. But we just feel so lucky to have had some really beautiful days on this trip and being able to really enjoy places like this with beautiful weather. Well, this was a fun stop. <laughs> yeah, it's to go visit Skellig and then to kind of see it here as the sun sets. Kind of, yeah, gorgeous. Kind of completes the day. But you know what really completes the day? Dinner. <laughs> and that's, and that's cool. what we're doing next. I think dessert closes the day up now. Well, maybe. Maybe some more sticky toffee pudding. Sticky, oh no. Sticky toffee pudding number seven. He's addicted. Well, right there, the Fisherman's Bar, Skellig Restaurant, right there, the boats, they go out to Skellig Michael. Already did the boats, now we're gonna have dinner right here. As you've heard me say a thousand times, picture perfect day here in Ireland. So we're gonna sit outside and I have been holding off on ordering fish and chips because I wanted to do it by the sea Tonight is the night that the fish and chips happen. So, let's go. Well, we put in our order here at the Skellig restaurant. I'm getting fish and chips. Madeline's getting sizzling prawns. Those are prawns that will be sauteed in a sweet chili sauce. We're by the ocean. This will probably be our last seafood meal, but we think it's gonna be a good one.
Well, my fish and chips has finally arrived right here by the ocean. And we're gonna go a little malt vinegar right on top of it. And we're just gonna pick up the whole piece. Go right in. It's just better by the water. They know how to do it because they've been doing it for years and I'm glad I waited to get fish and chips. So we were right here by the ocean. These are my sizzling prawns. We've had prawns a couple of different ways since we've been over here, but this is the first time it's being served like this in a chili oil sauce. Oh, that's good. That's good. A little bit spicy, fresh fish. I think this would be really, really good on top of pasta. This sauce here would be like the perfect just them. The perfect pasta sauce. I wish I had some noodles. I do have some carbs. Got some bread. Oh, oh man. Well, a fun stop in to Skellig restaurant here in Port McGee. That will probably be our last seafood meal here in Ireland as we're moving away from the coast, but we've had really tremendous seafood here. And uh, if you're coming to Ireland, you gotta get some seafood because it's very, very good. If you wanna see more from our adventures in Ireland, click right here. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.